Everyone uses the concept of truth, but do we really know what we're talking about? I am Rodrigo Gim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. What do you understand by the history of the concept truth? Please comment below so I can enter into a conversation with you. If you believe that thinking is fundamental in your life and you think you can discuss thought, then subscribe to this channel because that is our task here. One of Nietzsche's main critical points about the concept of truth is that the will to truth appears in the history of Christianity as a will to powerlessness. Truths appear as a deviation from responsibility, with the departure of God as the center, as the foundation of all values in Christian society, by the insertion of morals. You know, Nietzsche says that Christian morality was that which destroyed God as the foundation of all values. Meanwhile, the objectifying of truth still happens uh, with morality as the center, where human nature, law, and all that is put forward as a foundation uh, in the place of God now bears the sign of morality and bears the sign of the being, of the truth of being of things. The will to truth in the dominant culture is the will to another world, a world without appearances, uh, without becoming, in which all that exists is known and it, it is only the appearance of truth that is always elsewhere, in the not in the world. Nothing happens then in the world which is not knowable. Nothing happens uh, that is not predictable. Uh, for Nietzsche, to believe in any truth is not to describe things as they really are, but is already a form of action in the world. It is to put into practice a way of life. It is as a way of life that beliefs must be read and thought through. What does truth do? What are the effects of truth as a way of thinking and in practices? What kind of life is a truth connected to? Does it demean life because it seeks an ideal? Or does it affirm life because it doesn't stand on anything other than its singularity, its particularity? Truth then is always a creation. It is a naming of a process, as Nietzsche says in Will to Power. Truth is created, not discovered which does not mean that truth is false because it is created. The notion that truth must always be natural to be true is already a concept of truth created in a separation created in Western consciousness of a dualism between nature and culture, for example. For Nietzsche, genuine philosophers are creators of concepts. Their will to truth is their will for power, not a will to dominate, uh, which would be to affirm final truths as independent of the subject's creative will. A will to power uh, of a genuine philosopher is a philosopher that affirms his own creativity, does not hide his part in what he says, does not resort to the idea of a supposed objectivity, is not a coward because a philosopher then can assert his own creation. Nietzsche then asks about the value of truth. Uh, he is not interested in answering whether something is true or false because this is a less interesting question than asking about the value of truth. The value of, tr of truth has to do with the way of life that corresponds to it and the way of life it can reproduce. A truth has to be evaluated by the world it brings with it and how much it can improve life or make life worse or 
demean it, which means a belief may even be considered false, but if it helps to improve life, it is more valuable than a belief considered true that demeans life. A lot of things are judged or put forward uh, which make life worse and continue making life worse because they are held to be true regardless of their effects. It is in practice that these effects can be tested, but it, it is also an, in an attitude of not assuming that truths have only one effect. When we talk about morality, for example, where all good or evil would be linked to one or other truth, Nietzsche says that whenever we try to follow a truth to do only the good, for example, we always fail. Because the effects of truths in the world are always multiple and contradictory. One truth favors some ways of life against others. Truths bring some to life and kill others. They are never just words. These are life forces, and we have to choose which forces we are strengthening, as we often work against ourselves and what we say we care about. Uh, in practice, when we fight against ourselves or our allies, when we say we are fighting only for truth, forms of thought are, are forms of life. They circulate, producing other forms of life. But depending on which truths we reproduce, we are also annihilating life forms that we claim to care about. We must recognize that the space of discourse is a space of struggle, that when we put truths, we may be violating what we care about. It is important to be more effective in our practices, recognizing that no one speaks only the truth, but always a partial and interested truth, however unconscious. Is, is, this is an important step towards a new openness to thinking more deeply about who we are and what we are doing to ourselves and to others and to the world. To think is to act on life, but the ways of thinking we inherit, the dominant legacies of thought, act on subjects, often without these subjects recognizing these actions as legacy, as actions that pass through them. Nietzsche makes us think against a whole tradition of dualisms in the philosophy and metaphysics of Western culture. True and false is just one way of these dualistic uh, ways of thinking. Foucault even said that dualism is one of the characteristics of Western consciousness. To think, for example, of body and soul as a dualism, for Nietzsche is one of the Western prejudices, where the soul came to be overvalued and the body came to be devalued. With the body, everything in the material world has also been devalued, slandered, and Nietzsche links this in philosophy to Plato and after Plato to Christianity, because both of them slander material existence in favor of uh, a world of the beyond, of Plato's ideas and the beyond of Christianity. Thoughts, ideas are not arriving points for Nietzsche. They are passages. These are ways that need the test of time and experimentation to, for us to know if they can still work for us. An idea that improves our lives today can make our lives worse tomorrow, maybe. A way of thinking is a transitory moment. We don't know what might be best for us in the next moment. To accept that there is no universal truth is to accept the paradox as well. Because if we accept that there are no universal truths, we must also accept that there may be, for we cannot say that there are no universal truths. The issue again is another issue. What is the value of a truth? What are its effects? The point is that universal truths have been linked to forms of domination, to subjections and oppressions of various kinds. 
We cannot fall into a new morality that would dictate that it's, it is now forbidden to think or believe in universal truths. Perhaps a person needs, at a given moment uh, of their life, a universal truth to lean on, even if he is left with a more helpless and lower debased life. Or perhaps a belief in a universal truth may be a moment of a qualitative leap in life and health for somebody. The point is that life and health are not, not fixed. They change, the world changes, and it frustrates our attempts to frame everything into fixed truths continuously. And our truth dogmas, well, yes, if you define dogma as the institutionalization of truth by churches, by the sciences, or other institutions, but truths do not need to be dogmas to be dominant. They may be what Nietzsche calls the herd morality. They may extend to ways of thinking and living, and Nietzsche is not against this way of life of the herd itself, he just does not want it for him and for whom he calls the free spirits, those who do not align with universal truths. He believed that the herd should extend its morale only to itself, but of course, this is another provocation because the herd that believes to be guided by universal values believes that it can and often should bring others into the herd. Often, it does this violently and does not accept those who do not want to be a part, being able to punish them, to treat them, or even to kill those people that uh, don't want to be part of the herd morality or mentality. And what about relative truths? Are they the way out? We can question the truth itself, relative truths can be questioned that way. For it is not that everything is relative, but that everything is produced in relations. Even when we say that our truth is relative, we do it to try to convince someone of something. So the question is to question the concept of truth itself, including the absolute relative dualism we are so used to. More important than knowing if something is true or not is to ask what happens, what effects does this truth or action based on a truth have in the world. Truths for Nietzsche and Foucault are not just narratives. They are also practices, ways of life, power relations. Therefore, the struggle is not against truth itself because it doesn't exist, but it is in favor of openings so that subjects can have spaces for their own creation, for the construction of spaces for new subjectivities and new sociabilities. There is no total rejection of metaphysics of truth in Nietzsche or Foucault. They know that this total rejection is impossible. Jacques Derrida, another philosopher, also acknowledged that to fight metaphysics is to reproduce it, at least in part. The reason Nietzsche and Foucault are not content with metaphysics, universal or relative truth, is that truth is always a form of knowledge that does not realize reality, but says that it does, and that in practice it doesn't. It's not attentive to its multiple effects uh, in the world, including the way it always reproduces precisely what it critiques. We always reproduce, at least in part, what we are critiquing. There is no way out. Nietzsche doesn't say that universals don't exist. He merely looks at the ways of life of those who preach universals and judge them on the basis of those lives. He judges truths on the basis of lives. In Christianity, for example, the will to universal truths is linked to a slander against the body, against life itself. A downgrading of life happens in Christianity where the value of truths then is also low. 
uh, we cannot evaluate truths in themselves. That can't happen. Truths are always practical. They are linked to ways of living and practicing. And it is on this basis that we can evaluate, which is very different from judging, because judging implies a final truth. A moralistic truth that again causes us to slander and to diminish life. Nietzsche saw metaphysics as a falsity, because the placement of universal truths needs the false needs the deception to sustain itself in practice. But Nietzsche says that falsehood and deception are necessary for the self-perpetuation of life. His view of falsity and deception is neither moralistic nor metaphysical. So Nietzsche doesn't make a moral judgment of metaphysics. This was a point that some of his interpreters, like Heidegger, for example, didn't understand. Nietzsche critiques metaphysics, but not from a moral position. He does not want the end of metaphysics because he knows that this is impossible. Again, what he critiques is the misjudged effects of metaphysics. And he points out that those who can, the free spirits, as he calls them, uh, not fall into the pitfalls of metaphysical and moral judgment should practice their lives differently. For Nietzsche, wanting a life without deception, without falsehood, without disappointment is a will against life. He doesn't stand against Christianity itself, but against a Christian will to break the strong, to want everything diminished, to create a culture of decay where everything that is linked to a higher intelligence or some kind of elevation is attacked. The attack of morality against everything that rises above the herd, that is the reason why Nietzsche sees the problem of universal truths in this culture and not of truth in itself because truths are always practical and always relational to ways of life. For Nietzsche, truths are perspectives, which doesn't mean that they have the same value, but quite the opposite, that we must take care of these perspectives we cultivate because that, 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 is, that is where value lies, in this cultivation. And we must reap, reap the effects of this cultivation of ideas and practices. Every philosophy is a perspective that, for Nietzsche, brings with it the need for a practice of oneself that involves some suffering, because suffering is part of the path of a life that seeks more for itself, uh, of a person who seeks to know himself or herself, the world as a way of living more intensely. Nietzsche is more interested in the effects of truths than in the truths themselves in their metaphysical reality. This is what Michel Foucault relied on most in his work, uh, in Nietzsche's work, uh, on the effects of truth production, including the production of subjects who are often subjected in the process of this construction of truths. Well, people, now I would ask you to comment on Facebook or YouTube so I can respond to your questions and issues. This is a video conversation. It's a kind of an immersion in Nietzsche and Foucault, where the questions brought by you I bring to the debate and I also bring new questions. See you next Thursday.